It looks like a western. But in westerns, the bad guy never wins. In this duel, I carry no gun and no good guy costume. Just the poetry of who I am. The diversity of colors is covered with a sepia tone, and a big mustache hides our smiles. A character that is lost in the past and lost in history. You have guessed the riddle. Down in Mexico, I like to consume. What do you like to consume? I like to consume. Oh, baby. I like, I like to, to wash, wash it down, wash it down, it down with tequila, tequila, tequila and a ripa. Down in Mexico, I like to soak the tacos, guacamole, soak the tacos, guacamole. Down in Mexico, I like to... Let's be happy. We've had a good day. Let's sing. Vamos, Adelita. We don't really have a sense of what it means to be global. To be global means... You can take from different perspectives and understand, you can deal with them, and you can adjust and adapt. And I, I think that in the United States, we'll still have that concept of people adapt to us rather than we to them. Thank you. That's what you do, right? That's what you do. I think that some of the main ones include kind of caricatures of like a 19th century Mexico that is very rural and um, is still sort of tied to the land, is still sort of uh, suffused with people who wear sombreros and bandoleras. Um, I think people still sort of think that way in the States, but it's still, in spite of the fact that it's right there and that it is an immediate neighbor, I think people still have an image of it that's, you know, 150 years old and based on sort of more rural <laughs> stereotypes. Normalmente cuando vienen a hacer una película lo hacen en lugares que son rurales y que México no es solo un país no es solo un país rural. Americans who travel probably have a slightly different impression uh, and yet I think that still predominates that kind of uh, old world image even when they see things uh, say in the news to the contrary it, I think it still sort of sticks with people. An echo travels and announces that Mexico offers roads of adventure and free pieces of sand. In search of that Mexico that looks just like in the movies, many are hypnotized by the beauty of the desert and the sea. But just when they feel the unfamiliar spice in their tongue, they stay close to the north. Not very much. Most Americans, for instance, I don't think, would think that there's a city anywhere in Mexico. Uh, and their impression is that everyone sort of wanders around. And it's, it's, it's quite strange. Y esa es una imagen, pues que no va, porque para empezar no es así. Es México es un país grande, es un país que tiene ciudades, es un país que está creciendo, es un país que tiene... Es un país que es mucho más que esa imagen que existe, machista, o esa imagen que se tiene del mexicano como sumiso del México. Es mucho más. Como vivir en cualquier otra. Mismos problemas, este mismo tráfico, el mismo estrés porque tengo que llegar a mi trabajo, el mismo estrés porque tengo que hacer bien mi trabajo, eh, la misma competencia que hay en todas las ciudades de que si no hago bien mi trabajo alguien más lo va a hacer. Se me hace como cualquier otra ciudad. 
the urban clock suffers insomnia, while walking crowds and traffic jams wake up with the smell of homemade tortillas. But the best part is dessert, a sweet taste of the past that rebels against modernity. And then, of course, the whole issue of immigration, undocumented workers coming across. Most people don't see that as undocumented workers. They see them as um, illegal uh, people, so doing breaking the law, so to speak. So I think that's a general perception of people, especially in Texans who live a along the border of what Mexico is. So not a positive one. I think it becomes difficult for most people to dissociate their opinions and attitudes towards immigration from their opinions and attitudes towards you know people who sort of stay in Mexico and aren't immigrants or aren't trying to find work in the states um, but it's quite difficult I think for most people not to separate the two I think that they uh, they kind of feed off of one another um, que el mexicano es flojo. I think that's a really strong stereotype uh, that may sort of supersede all of the other ones. Uh, and the ironic thing is that as a stereotype, it should be the one that is actually destroyed before all of the others, mostly because the sorts of work that many Mexicans wind up doing in the States are manual labor. The sorts of things where, you know, you don't actually sort of do it if you're lazy. Um, and it's quite strange that that stereotype seems to really sort of hold on even as the experience that people have of immigration should work against that and should sort of destroy it. Near the border, Mexico is an immigrant with no name. An immigrant who holds a family picture in the pockets of his work uniform. Nobody seems to know his story and his face is hardly shown in the screens. And even though Hollywood may not see it, I see contrast, feeling, and taste behind that wall. I'm glad I'm back. La imagen del mexicano gordito con su sombrero, ¿no? moreno. Probably always a dark, swarthy looking person. You know, they don't realize the diversity of, of phenotype that, that exists in Mexico. El México es un México pluricultural construido por una diversidad increíble de pueblos, en donde incluso el mismo mestizo juega varios roles en determinados este, este, lugares. Entonces, de entrada, yo no, yo, no, yo no podría hablar de un proceso de homogeneidad como tal, es más bien un proceso de diversidad. I don't think that people know about much about the history of Mexico, for example, nor do they know the history of the United States and, and Mexico. But if they knew, you know, that part of the United States had been Mexico, and that the Spanish trail went all the way through, you know, Texas, uh, all the southwest up to California. If they knew those kinds of things, if they knew about the advances that the indigenous groups in Mexico have. Education might play a role in it. I know it sounds horrible from somebody who teaches, but uh, I'm not quite sure that that's always going to work. There's some people for whom Telling them these things is never going to make a difference. And what will make a difference is them living in communities where they share experiences, where they share disaster, where they share triumph. Probably the, the biggest insult of all, and that is that we're not even seen as important. We're not an issue. And in the United States, race relations have to do with black and white issues. They haven't looked at the fact 
that there is an ethnic minority that is now larger than the African American. Pues resulta que hay muchísimo latino en Estados Unidos y eso se presta a que se generen estereotipos porque la gente de allá necesita clasificar rápidamente, ¿no? Most Americans who haven't traveled uh, or who don't think about these things regularly are probably still at the stage of trying to break down and make distinctions between Hispanic and Latin, um, still trying to figure out what the difference is between you know, all of these various groups which they kind of lump together as being of Spanish-speaking stock. I think one of the reasons why is that among Latinos, it's a very diverse group. Puerto Ricanos are different from Cubanos and different from Mexicanos. So there's not a, a clear-cut idea that people in Hollywood have about of who Latinos are. I live in this country now. I'm called by this name. I speak this language. It's not quite the same. For no other reason than this, it's my home. And the places I used to be far from are gone.